my friends think I'm crazy. I know I'm not, but I can understand why they think I am. I mean, it's a crazy story. That's why I stopped telling it. But I'm older now. Ten. I was only nine when it happened. Last Christmas. I guess I should start off by telling you about Papa and me. Papa was my grandfather. I loved him as much as I loved my mother and father. And a whole lot more than I love my sister. He was my best friend. Oh, I mean, Scotty Mills and I are good friends because of school in Little League, but Papa and I were even better friends. He was the greatest person who ever lived. Really. He was a police detective in New York City. I've got the gold badge they gave him when he retired. Anyways, he came to live with us in California after my grandmother died. He moved into the extra room. He taught me almost everything I know. Oh, we went places together, made things together, and laughed a whole lot together. I really love Papa. And you have to understand that before I tell you the rest. I'll begin on the last day of school before Christmas vacation. All right, children. I've got to admit that, you know, he was slightly sensational. I think he stood out above the others. I think he did. He was great. You're not prejudiced, are you? How can you tell? May I help you? Oh, yes. Um, I'd like something full, maybe six, seven feet. Well, the larger ones are over here. Come on over here.
I thought Christmas trees were supposed to be green. Huh? Yeah, honey. What do you think? I think you've got California on me. He's gotten to you, painted Christmas tree. The heat hasn't gotten to me. It's gotten to these trees. Salesmen said that they're all drying out, so the flocking helps the needles stay on. Besides, Missy's always wanted a white flock tree. Well, whatever makes you happy. Doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to be here anyway. Grandfather? Yeah. He says he wants to show me what Christmas is really like. Wish I could go with you. You'll have a good time in Palm Springs. Yeah. Not like you. I mean, it's just gotta be you and your grandfather. And he's so insane. Me. I've got to go with my whole family. <laughs> You don't by chance have a pension check for me, do you? Right on top, Mr. Halligan. Hey, you go. Thank you. Thank you. When are you and Robbie leaving? Tomorrow. I'm going to need every penny of this to show that boy the time of his life. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Merry Christmas. You too. Thank you. Da 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 da. Papa said he and I are gonna stay up as late as we want, eat whatever we want, and go wherever we want. Stop it! I don't want to hear anymore. You're making me jealous. I mean, yeah, I'm going to Palm Springs, but I've got to stay in the same room with my mother's aunt. She's one of those little old blue-haired things. It's always pinching your cheek. Ah, <laughs> oh, shut up. It's not funny. See you later. Bye. Mom told him to wait for Dad. They couldn't save him. I don't understand. An hour ago, he seemed so, so happy, so full of life. I made this for you, Papa. The art teacher told us to draw a holiday scene to me in New York. Son, it'd be best. It's your fault! Why didn't you save him? Why did he have to die? Bobby, Bobby, no, no, it's no problem.
It had to happen someday. I, it had to happen someday. I knew I was a goner. I told the doc, nothing stopped me but old age. Uh, what stopped you? Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I must be dreaming. No, you're not. This is it. We're all old enough. Wait, hold it back here. Uh, I'm, I'm not that old. And you should have taken better care of yourself. Take care of yourself? I was jogging five miles a day. What good did it do me? Look, you're not... You're just not gonna take this, are you? Look, I am not. Underline the word not. I'm gonna go through those gates. When your time comes... Your time comes. Get out of here. You in charge here? Who, me? Heavens, no. Oh, well, if you're if you're not in charge, who is? Well, the archangel, of course. But well, well, where where is he? He's over there. But I really wouldn't talk to him now. No? Why not? He's not in a very good mood. the same job for over 200 years. He was acting strangely. I saw it. You should never have sent him down. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me, sir. May I... May I have a word with you? You're supposed to stay in line. But I... Uh, I just want a couple more days. That's that's all. Just a couple. A couple if you're more. here, he called. And there's nothing I can do. But, sir, you, you don't seem to understand. I made a promise to my grandson, and I've never broken a promise to my grandson. Death is an obligation of life. You'll come to understand. This is the way children learn. Uh, sir, you see, I, I was a policeman in New York for 45 years. I saw people at their absolute worst. But at Christmas time, everything seemed to change. It was like magic. And everyone could feel a certain spirit. I wanted him to see that. He's young. He has plenty of time. But it's different when you're older. Sir, may I speak to you for just one minute? Uh, could you wait here just a second, sir? Yes. Thank you. Uh, did you hear what he said? Yes. So what? He said he was a policeman in New York City. And it says here, not only was he but a policeman, but a detective. What are you getting at? Well, didn't you hear how he loves Christmas in New York City? Yes, but everybody but, loves but Christmas. But I'm convinced, sir, that he did not arrive here by accident. I believe that he sent him to help solve our problem. through the gate. be able to make a deal? 
A deal? I need help. It seems that we lost one of our angels. Yes, he disappeared in New York City using the mortal name of Wiley Boggs. He was sent down to spread the Christmas cheer. Uh, something he does every year, a routine assignment. But he hasn't been heard from since. Yes, and then we've been getting terrible reports that since he disappeared, the city is missing its traditional Christmas spirit. Listen, I'm going out on a limb. But perhaps your arrival at this time wasn't an accident. I don't understand. Let me explain. are on their way. Kate, I'm sorry. I was so sudden. I, I just can't believe that he's gone. Oh, honey. What was that? Hey, where's my brown bag? I gotta get going. Uh, what's going on here? You said he had no pulse, no heartbeat. He didn't. You were dead. Dead? Do I look dead? I better check the equipment. Daddy! Daddy! Everything's gonna be all right, honey. Robbie and I have to get to New York right away. Robbie. Papa! <laughs> when you get packed, we have to take an earlier flight. Look, Robbie, wait, wait. No, you come right back here. Nobody's going anywhere till I find out what's going on. Did you take my brown bag? We'd better get him back to bed. Dad, come on, let's go. It's all right. No. Honey, it's all right. You almost died. Almost, I did. Now I'm back on a mission from heaven. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, he's getting oh, sick. No, no, no. Oh, People just don't die. Stop. 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 a fiddle. Tell me about the angels again. I couldn't sleep thinking about what you said. <sighs> the angels. You were the only one who believed me. You wouldn't lie. No, but I wouldn't. That's why we have to hurry and get ourselves to New York. You mean it? Shh. I still get to go? Of course. Those were the conditions of the deal. We'll be able to find that angel in a snap and we'll have the rest of the week together. What about Mom and Dad? Robbie, this is one time we've got to keep this just to ourselves. Well, if you say it's okay, it's got to be. I mean, Mom said you should never argue with your parents. And you're a father, right? Kate, you're going to have to face the fact. Your father's getting old. But he's not certifiable, and I resent you saying that to everyone. He was always a character, doing crazy stuff. I know, I know, but I'm telling you, this is different. He's senile. And all that, that ranting about heaven and angels, come on. I mean, we have got to deal with this problem. There is no problem. He faked a heart attack. He did not. You heard the doctor. There's nothing physically wrong with him. I was here. I saw what happened. I can't explain it, but neither can the paramedics, but he did not fake it. Well, I am really glad that we canceled that trip to New York. I was never very hot on that idea anyhow. 
You never said anything. He's got entirely too much influence over Robbie. I mean, he believes everything your father tells him. Wild, crazy cop story stuff. Oh, you're exaggerating. They just have a good time together, and he's a very good influence on Robbie. Keep the wheels straight. And after we pass the house, then I'll take over the controls. All right? Take the brake off. Driving with you is better than any ride at Disneyland. Mm. Papa, look. Hmm? I think I can see our house down there. Uh, could be. Might be right. Do you think they found our letter yet? I don't know, but call home as soon as we land. Let them know we're all right. You know, we have a family tradition. Your grandmother and me, we used to take your mother for a horse-drawn carriage ride every Christmas Eve, right down Fifth Avenue. I can still hear the horse's sound of the hoofs going... <laughs> I think you're going to like it. You had to see all the decorations, smell the chestnuts roasting, watching the people who've been doing the last minute shopping, rushing around, not being able to wait almost to get home. And if we're real lucky, it'll even snow. I've never seen snow. Well, not in real life. Hello, Dad. Kate, listen to me. Everything is all right. Robbie is right here with me. We're going to take a cab now, and we'll call you when we get to the hotel. No, don't. Look, Rick and I think it'd be best if you just turn around right now and just take the next flight back. Don't be silly. We left your station wagon in Area C, aisle... Uh, aisle 9. Aisle 9. We don't care about the car. Just let me talk to him. Daddy, we want you and Robbie to come home. Now, what happened to you yesterday was... Never mind about what happened yesterday. Look, I know you don't believe me. It's not that I don't believe you. Oh, is he still talking about those angels? Give me that. Listen, this has gone far enough. Now, I want you on the next plane back out here. Right. He's not taking this too good. I can't believe that you would sneak out like that. I mean, I thought it was settled. The trip was off. I want you to calm down. Calm down? You kidnapped our son. You, you, you are, you are a senile old man. You are out of touch with reality. I mean, I can't we'll call you when we get to the hotel. No one in his right mind Richard, I hope you're in a system. better mood. He hung up on me. Well, you shouldn't have yelled at him like that. What's all the noise? Pat, we're going to New York. Now, Robbie, I don't want you to ever hang up on your father like I just did. It's all right for me to do it because I'm older and I'm senile.
Bronx, New York. <laughs> Where'd you fly in from? L.A. L.A. I got a brother-in-law out there. That's where I'd like to be for the holidays. Ah, uh, New York is the only place to be during the Christmas seasons. Usually, yeah, but not this year. What do you mean? Look at me. I got beat up. Hey, look, look, look where are you going? And all because I went out of my way to help somebody. Well, no more. From now on, I can be as mean and miserable as the rest of them. Boy, he sure hasn't got the Christmas spirit. Everyone is like him. The archangel was right. Then you just gotta find that missing angel. You know, maybe they were right in sending me back here. I knew I was a good detective for 45 years. My death wasn't an accident. He needed me. Well, what happens after you find him, Papa? Do you have to go back to heaven? A deal is a deal, my boy. How long did you have? The Archangel said I had until Christmas. I'll be able to see your grandmother again. Heaven isn't that bad. Heaven? I thought you was from Los Angeles. <laughs> hey, I had a fair last week told me just get in from Mars. He did look a little tired. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, well, don't, don't come at me, pal. Huh? Look, okay, get out. What, you to my cat, huh? what are you doing, Pop? Does anyone from New York drive like you and him? It'll be safer if we walk. Come on. You want to? I'm a cat. Look at the car. Yes, yeah, one. your bag. Wait, wait, just a minute, I'll get the money. Hey, fella! I left the bear in the front seat, keep the change! Book yeah, me! Wanna... You're gonna book me! All right. seems to be the new motto at City Hall. Over the past few weeks, the council's passed a series of controversial resolutions, which most members admit are only token gestures in order to cut back expenses in our near bankrupt city. First, they vetoed the necessary funds for police support, forcing the cancellation of the traditional pre-Christmas parade. Then, in the uh, name of energy conservation, they banned the use of Christmas lights and decorations. And uh, finally, just five minutes ago, the council passed Resolution 356, which will withdraw all city contributions to the traditional Christmas Day charities. So much for tradition and charity. The parade's gone, the lights are out. Thanks to City Hall, it's shaping up to be a very dim Christmas indeed. Cindy Mills reporting from City Hall. Let's get this back to the station. Snazzy, huh? <laughs> you know, your grandmother and me used to come here for dinners on our anniversary. You want me to take those? Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Something for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, what's the matter? Not enough? No, no, no. It's just that this is the first tip I got all morning. I saw this for the noon. Okay, I think I got this right. We're gonna open with this, 
I'm going to go with this. I'm going to cut it from here on out, right? Um, um, we, we think that this is an option. You got the city council tape? I want to run it at noon. Yes, yeah, sure. sure Gladys? Yeah. I need that back. Heard they found 356. What'd you expect? A little show of seasonal cheer. What's got into those damn people on the council? How much could they have saved the city? You know, it's a gesture. Something they think is going to be seen in Washington. Maybe looking for another federal Sid, bailout. call DPR. Yeah. Tell them to hold. I'm sending Mike down. Mike? Yeah. We're going to run this on the news break. Got it, eh? Better tell Steve. you got to get me something for tomorrow night. The Christmas Eve broadcast. Yeah, like what? Human interest. Uh, upbeat. No, no. It's easier said than done. Which one's the Empire State Building? It's down on 34th Street. I'm going to show you everything. But we got to stop by my old precinct first and get a line on that missing angel. The Archangel, all he said was that this guy was short and fat, going under the mortal name of Wiley Boggs. Hey, what's going on over there? That's Rempelmeyer's, famous for its window display at Christmas. <laughs> What? And Santa's wife's trying to stop him. Wait, wait, now some man's in the window. And they're snacking him with pies. Pies? Did you say pies? Excuse us, coming through. Excuse us, please. Try to, try to, try to. Pull over. Might be a story. <laughs> you know, something's wrong in this city. I bet if mom and dad could see what's going on, they believe your story. <laughs> Come on, we've got work to do. Excuse me. Excuse me. Show you where I used to work. Which one was your desk? Well, Halligan? Jimmy! I thought he was oh, you! It's <laughs> my grandson, Robbie. I brought him to New York. I wanted him to see Christmas in New York. Out on the West Coast, they've got pink Christmas trees. They don't know anything about Christmas. <laughs> well, welcome back. Thank it's you. so good to, good see, to see you, Mike. Friend. You know, your grandpa was the best detective in the precinct. Oh, Broke me in, taught me everything I know. Hey, stick around. Soon as I finish this report, we can talk. Shall do. Hey, is the captain around? On his way back. Be here any minute. All right, Don't leave. I won't. <laughs> here. This is my... This was my desk. Everything the same. Same old squeak. <laughs> hey, where's the bullet hole? Oh, the bullet hole. You wanted to see that here. There. There it is. Missed my head just by inches. Some crazy guy just got out of prison. Had it in for me because I was the guy that sent him to prison. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch this. Simpson, they need you down to forensics. Ramo, the Hennessy Coffee Central. No. Oh, stay down. All right, then somebody's got to get down there. How are they going to get down there? And... Mike, what are you doing here? Looking for somebody, but I haven't got much time. Shoot. All I have is a name and general description. What's the name? Wiley Boggs. Well, let's see if we can get anything. D-O-G-G-S. G-S, right. comma, 
W I F E Y. When did you get this? Just after you left. It works, but I hate it. Looks like we got something. Boggs Wiley, arrested 1222. Yesterday. D and D. Drunk or disorderly. No known address, no prior. Transferred to Bellevue for observation. You remember the nut who kept screaming he was an angel? <laughs> huh? Sounds like we found our man. Why don't you believe I'm an angel? I'd like to believe in angels, but... Reality tells me there are no such things. Uh, but whose reality, Doctor? Mr. Boggs, if you are an angel, what are you doing in New York? Why aren't you in heaven? Well, I'm down here on assignment. Oh? Yes, to spread the Christmas cheer. I've been doing it a long, long time. And I've always requested New York, because it's such fun. But not this year. No, people don't seem to care. It's their attitude. Rush, 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 push, push, push. Oh, I tried, but... Look, Doctor, I've, I've got to get out of here. I, I'm in enough trouble as it is. They can't be happy about what's happening down here, and they're going to blame me. Is that why you got drunk? Yeah, I... I had no control over the situation. Now, that had never happened before. So I... I had a drink. I never had one before. I, I, I didn't know what it would do. In the past, how did you control the situation? Oh, well, I, uh, I have powers. Mm, at least I had them. Well, I'm not sure now. What did you do with these powers? I made people feel happy, full of joy. Doctor, I've, I've, I've got to get out of here. Oh, yes. Maybe we have had enough for today. I'll take you back to the ward, and we'll pick this up tomorrow. Hmm? Come on, Mr. Box. The ward is this way. this way because it's the way out <laughs> oh mr boggs i am not releasing you what can i do for you doc i'm releasing this patient you're the doc why did i do that Probably Still find involved. somebody to help us. Some people. Oh. Yes, I'll take uh, it. Pardon me, Miss. Could you possibly help us? Information's on the first floor. Excuse me, sir. Could you help us find? I'm too busy. Excuse me. Do you uh, seem to need some help? Yes, we're trying to find a patient on this floor. Oh, well, you know, this is a detention ward. Visitors must have police clearance. Oh, well. Let me show you this if I may. 
Gee, I've never seen one like that before. And they give that to you when you retire. Oh, so you're not a policeman anymore? No, it's most important that I see this patient. It really is. Yeah, I really shouldn't do that. I guess we can make an exception. I'm Dr. Kent. How do you do? Follow me. What's uh, the patient's name? Wiley Boggs. Ah, uh, yes. Boggs. He's the first nice person we've met since we've been in New York. There he is. Open this door. <laughs> you fools! You never recognized me with my glasses on! <laughs> Gotta get out! Metropolis needs me! Insane! What else? Lois! I'll get you out of this! making such progress. I don't know why I released him. It just seemed right at the time. Well, maybe he used his angel powers on you. Hmm? Just kidding. I have never done anything like that before. So you say you found nothing on him? There was nothing in his pockets? Mm-mm. At least we know what he looks like, huh, Robbie? And with this, we... And we've got a lead. Will somebody get that phone? Wake up, guys. <laughs> Detective Ramos? Yes. Hold on. Captain, for you. For Los Angeles, line 43. Captain Santini. This is Kate Weston, Mike Halligan's daughter. Kate, how are you? Yeah, your dad just left there. He looks great. He was there? Was my son with him? Robbie? Yeah, cute kid. Uh, listen, Captain, I'm worried about my dad. He's not well. Uh, we don't know whether he had a heart attack or what, but he took Robbie without our permission. He kidnapped him. Now, my husband and I are about to board a plane. We should be in New York by tonight. If you could just do me a favor, if you see my dad, could you just hold on to him? I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Kate, we'll do everything we can. Thank you. I'll talk to you as soon as you get in. Yeah. Bye-bye. Fine. Ramos! Yeah? Come here. Didn't old Halligan look good to you? Yeah, he sure did. Oh, look, do me a favor. He was headed down to Bellevue looking for that crackpot angel. See if you can find him. Make up something, but tell him I've got to see him right away. I'll get on it. And what does Christmas mean to you? What does Christmas mean to me? It means standing on this corner, freezing my bunions, ringing a stupid bell. And for what? And what does Christmas mean to you? Well, it used to mean presents, but not anymore. My old man ain't worked since summer. Sir, would you like to share with us what, what, what Christmas means to you? Yeah, lady, everything's a hassle this year. That's what it means to me, okay? I'm offering bargains here. Come on, officer. Christmas to me means joy, family, giving, sharing, and going crazy if I don't get this story for the 6 o'clock news tomorrow night. Scared, Papa? A little. Can I ask a dumb question? Sure. Isn't there any way you can get 
out of going back? I mean, I've seen you do some pretty fast talking. I don't think we'll be able to get out of it this time, Rob. <laughs> well, what if we hid? Hey. Hey, son, look at it this way. We've had a few extra days together. I've never heard of anybody else being able to come back and spend a few extra moments with someone they really love. Getting another chance to do that, I've never heard of that. But it won't be the same without you. I remember how I felt when I thought you were dead. Yeah, I was angry too. They really know what they're doing up there. I've been thinking. I've had a really good life. A full life. I was one of the lucky ones, Robbie. I was never a burden on anybody. Yes, son, I was one of the lucky ones. Yeah, it's 15 bucks an hour, minimum of three hours. And for a flat hundred, you can get Santa for the whole day. Uh-uh. Either you pick him up or you pay cab fare both ways. Okay, when do you need him? In an hour? You plan everything this far ahead? <laughs> yeah, 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 give me the address. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, don't worry, he'll be there. Just listen for the sleigh bell. Calvin! Yeah. Hey, what gives? I was up next. You want the job? It's yours. The Mystic Knights Lodge Hall up on 126th and Lex. That's Harlem! Let me handle that, brother. See you later. Good and try not to spill anything on the suit this time. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes, thank you. Oh, Merry Christmas. Yes. Uh, what can I do for you? You, you? you need a suit for Christmas Eve, huh? Hey, hey. I got a great elf costume for the kid. No, uh, no, we're here for a different reason, sir. You by chance, uh, have you ever seen this gentleman? Yeah, I sent him to Zellbuck's toy store two days ago, and he never showed. And he still got my suit. Do you know where he is? No, but your Santa suit's in the police ward at Bellevue. Um, uh, did he leave an address or a telephone number? Nah, he came in off the streets like the rest of them. They don't have phone numbers and addresses. Who are you? Oh, I'm, uh, my name is Halligan. I'm staying at the Mayflower, and if by chance you see him again, why, would you, uh, let me know, I'll, I'll make it worth your while. It's, uh, in California, it's 4.30. Guess we'll try him another time. Come on. Mike? Mike? Hey, Harry. What's the news, Harry? Uh, no one on the street knows nothing about this Boggs. What's his scam? <laughs> That's just it, Harry. He hasn't got any scam. Huh? 
Here, here's a little something for your trouble. For nothing? Sure. <laughs> oh, it's good seeing you again. Just like old times. Bye. Oh, bye. Come on, let's get some dinner. like I'm one of those statues in the park. You are. You're my own statue in my own personal park. Hello. Darling, you realize that you've never danced with me to my music. Well, I've always wished I could. It's a little difficult on a piano bench, Mrs. Duchin. Say that again. Say Mrs. Duchin again. I'm having a great time, really. But you're not seeing what I really wanted you to see. It's all because of that... that angel. Keep the change. You know, you, you've got to be here. When the lights go on the trees, and everything's all aglow. Sure, and, and the shoppers are shopping. People with packages, the carolers on every corner caroling carols. Grandpa, can I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. What did you mean when you said Wiley doesn't have a scam? Wiley Boggs, Robbie, and all criminals. If they don't have a scam, they... What's the matter? Wiley Boggs. He isn't a criminal. He isn't even a person. He's an angel. Well, who are we going? Robbie, when you want to catch an angel, you have to think like an angel. Papa, what are we doing here? There's any one person on earth that knows about angels. It's Monsignor Donahue. out of seminary he straightened out an awful lot of us kids <laughs> you know your grandpa came from a very tough section of Brooklyn and at one of the church dances I I met your grandma five years later he married us does mom know him who do you think baptized her? Well, I hope he can help us. He will, Robbie. He will, son.
None of those little guys look like the mugshot we have of Wiley. <laughs> trouble in now. Must have been serious to have to wake up an old priest from his bed. Huh? Hey, you're just gonna stand there and not talk, huh? I understand. I've aged, sure. It's their fault, though. They, 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 they just treat me like I'm an old man. I, I can't do anything. Who's that young fellow? Oh, this is Robbie, my grandson. Oh! Kate's boy. Yeah, well... He doesn't look a, anything like you, Michael. He's a, he's a lot handsomer than you were at his age. <laughs> Father Carl, would you get some uh, milk and cookies for the lad? Thank you. Uh, now, how about a little refreshment for you and me? Huh? You remember where it is? St. Thomas Aquinas... Summa Theologica. Good. Good, good. Hey, just like Papa. Except at home, he hides his behind the... Robbie. <laughs> All right, now, don't be stingy. Fill him up. <laughs> That's better. There we are. Out of your, to your health, sir? Now, tell me, why did you come here? What would you say if I told you that I died, went to heaven, and was sent back here on a mission to find a lost angel? <laughs> well, I... I'd say I'd like to hear the whole story. Tell me, what do you think? You know, I've always believed in the concept of heaven. But I must confess, I thought that the order of angels was a theological myth. Mm. You know? was, was there really a gate? Oh. <laughs> Not only was there a gate, I, I was about to... Uh, I was about to go through it <laughs> until I remembered the promise that I'd made to Robbie. Yeah. I'm going to miss that boy. You know, everything I heard you preach about heaven over the years... <laughs> You were right on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's comforting to know because I'll be seeing it myself soon enough. <laughs> As for finding that angel, that seems like an almost impossible task. Mm. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised that they didn't have another reason for bringing you back down here. Another reason? I, yeah. I don't understand that. Well, I, I, 
I can't explain it, but you'll know. When the time's right, you'll know. I'm, I'm sorry I can't help you more, but... You can. You can. Would you hear an old friend's last confession? Oh, my God. It would be an honor. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. I'm sorry for having offended you. And I detest the sins because I recognize I just can't get this assignment off my mind. Now, tomorrow's Christmas Eve. I gotta have something for the human interest spot. You'll get it. What time is it? It's past your bedtime. You've got to get some sleep. But we've got to find Wiley. We will after we get some sleep. We're gonna call home again? Yeah, and I hope your father's calmed down. He hasn't. Just a little salt? No. You're not even supposed to be eating those eggs. How can you eat those? Hey, Papa, finish with the ketchup? Yeah. Just eat your eggs. I'm going to check with the airlines. See if any of them can get us out here today. Oh, Rick. Maybe Daddy's right. We're here. It's Christmas Eve. Why don't we see if we can't salvage something out of all this mess? And if we do, I can go shopping. Please, Dad. I'm, I apologize. It's over with. I just wanted Robbie to see New York at Christmas time. And now that we're all here, why don't we just have a good time and enjoy everything? Kate, did you tell him about our family tradition, about getting in the carriages and riding down Fifth Avenue or maybe over in the park? Oh, I'm sure I have. Come on. Please. No more tricks? You don't leave our sight. And not another word about angels. Excuse me, Mr. Halligan. Yes. There's a phone call for you. Thank you. Excuse me. I wonder who it could be. He's up to something. 
No. Okay, okay. <clears throat> we'll stay for a couple of days. But remember what we agreed upon. We find a rest home for him as soon as we get back. Thanks. Yes, operator, this is Mr. Halligan. You have a call. Hello. Halligan, this is Murray at Rent Center. He's here right now, and as nutty as ever. He mumbled something about giving New York one more chance. Oh, stall him. I'll be right there. What? A, don't forget the money. I won't. Well, I'll be right there. Mom, we have to go to Saks. And I can't come to New York and not see Bloomingdale. Honey, do you realize how much this trip has cost me already? Okay, you can forget Hawaii next summer. We've already blown the trip fund. No, thank you. Missy, you know, your father's right. We can't be spending that much money. But there are a lot of other things in New York you can do. Right. New York is full of museums, and they don't cost anything. He raised his hand, but he never swore. hit me in the middle of the night. I remember reading about this guy Pringle a couple of years ago. Merry Christmas. And then he was 103. And the point of the story was that he was born on Christmas Day. And hey, you have to sell me. I'll shoot whatever you want. Mel's going to love this story. This guy's older than the Brooklyn Bridge. And tomorrow he's going to celebrate his 105th Christmas. Now that is a story. Cindy. Oh, you look just like you do on television. Hi. I'm Mrs. Bush, the administrator. I tried to reach you at the station, but they said you were already on your way. Oh, is there a problem? Well, yes, I'm afraid there is. When we spoke this morning, you said everything was all set up. Oh, yes, it was. And as a matter of fact, Mr. Pringle was so looking forward to his interview, but I'm afraid his granddaughter just called. They're not picking him up tomorrow. You see, every year, his family have a reunion to celebrate his birthday and Christmas. Oh, he so looks forward to it. It's the only time he ever gets out. Don't tell me this year they're not having it. That's right. Apparently, not enough members of the family were interested. Oh, the poor man is absolutely devastated. I'm afraid he refuses to talk to anyone. We're playing a total of three rounds. In each round, you'll be shown five possible answers to the questions I'll be asking. Any member of the family buzz in an answer, but if incorrect, then the other team will have the opportunity... Where is he? I couldn't keep him here, so he left. What? All right, all right, don't get excited. I know where he went. I sent him to an office party uptown. Why did you let him go? I don't know why I did it. Just seemed like the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, he seems to have that effect on people. Where is this office party? Where's the money you promised me? Here's a fin. You call this making it worth my while? Or you'll get more later after I find him now. Where did you send him? Billington, Blankford and White. It's a law firm on 5th and 52nd. And we're gonna have a good time, okay? I don't want to hear either of you complain about anything. But, Dad, can't we just... A good time does not mean shopping, young lady. Well, maybe I should stay with No! Mom. Now, you are coming with me. I'm not letting you out of my sight. If your mother wants to stick around the hotel and wait for that crazy old man to come back, that is her business. Papa's not crazy. I don't want to just... hear another word out of you. You are in enough trouble as it is. Party. Well, you're too late. It broke up about an hour ago. What did you say? They all went home. My, my. It must have been quite a party. Why did it break up so... Why did it break up so early? Party? 
Oh, well, if that's what it was supposed to be, nobody was in the mood. First of all, old Billington had too much to drink, and he told Blankford what he really thought of him. Oh, 40 years of hate poured out of that man. And when poor old White tried to step in, well, they both jumped all over him. And the employees seemed to enjoy it. None of them stepped in to break it up. Tis the last Christmas party this company will ever see. Here, Merry Christmas. understand that when people get older they be they change papa's not crazy i can't explain it to you because you'll never understand robbie robbie your grandfather is living in the past he's in love with a new york and a christmas that just doesn't exist anymore look look at that you see that that is christmas in new york Just look. Come on, Robbie. <laughs> surprised. Well, so now you found me. What are you supposed to do? Tell you full of coffee. Come on. One P.O.P. on toast. Two, two coffees and a... Uh, Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Range is mine. I'm 
It's no big deal. You pick up the phone, you say, Mel, we ain't got it. There's no human interest piece for your six o'clock news. Cindy, it's Christmas Eve. I'm going home. Oh, come on, Jim. Now, don't you give up on me. I will find a story. I won't believe that in all of Manhattan, there's not a single upbeat item. No, thanks, not working. Temperatures will be brisk and Only a 10% chance of... Frank? Yeah. Not a word yet on my father. I've talked to Captain Santini twice in the last hour. What's the matter? Don't get excited. We've been to the police station. Robbie's disappeared. I came down like I always did to spread the Christmas cheer. I've been doing it for more than a mortal lifetime. How do you do it? How do you spread the cheer? Oh, it's easy. Just a kind word here, a little encouragement there. My favorite is to find a particularly grumpy person and turn them around. <laughs> All it takes is a, a little smile or word or two of encouragement to make them feel good about themselves. And you know, it's contagious. It spreads rapidly from person to person, block to block, neighborhood to neighborhood. Before you know it, the whole city has the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but not this year. No, nothing seemed to work. So I, I gave up. And you started drinking. Well, hey, I'm not perfect. I tried. I, I was even going to request a white Christmas for the city. It's not too late. Oh, no. It's impossible. It's much too late. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> no one cares. You can't give up. People are just people. You're an angel. If you give up the spirit, why... What hope does anyone or, or the world have? Please, please leave me alone. You can tell the Archangel that you found me. You did your job. You can also tell him that I couldn't do mine. Papa? Yeah? It doesn't sound that hard. What? What he does. Making people feel good. Doesn't sound like you need any kind of angel powers to do it. So, if you don't think it's too late, maybe we could do it. What's the matter? You know, I've... I've been trying to think of what Monsignor Donahue meant when he said, you'd know when the time was right why you were sent back. I think you've just given me the reason. What do you mean? Well, if our little misguided angel couldn't do it. Maybe we can, Robbie. <laughs> Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power. When we are gone, Uh, Cindy just called in. She hasn't got any tape, and she wants to go on live. With what? We get something else for her spot? Uh, we could, uh, could extend sports. Hmm. I could extend the weather. Put her on. Okay, page five. So, the singing didn't work. We gotta find somebody that's down and out and cheer them up. Hello, we want to wish you the merriest of Christmases. Ah, oh, why don't you buzz off?
Yeah, yeah, we're going to remote. Ten seconds, Cindy. I gotta go. Five, four, three, two. Cure. Good evening. And I'd like to say Merry Christmas, as it is Christmas Eve, but somehow it just doesn't seem appropriate, and I'll tell you why. Yesterday, the Channel 3 news producer asked me to go out and, and get an upbeat story for this segment. Sounded like fun, not so difficult. This reporter had the same assignment last year and came back with hours of tape of happy New Yorkers filled with joy and, and goodwill. It was heartwarming and reaffirming and made one look forward to the next holiday season. Where's she going with this? Well, here it is, but the spirit is missing. I have been all over Manhattan looking for these same warm scenes. People full of joy, smiling faces, laughing children, and I cannot find them anywhere. Instead, all I've seen are, are downhearted, dispirited, nasty people who don't seem to realize that Christmas is here. So I, I don't really have a story. And it's left me wondering. Cindy. What's wrong? Cindy. 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 Sir, we're on live here, Channel 3. I know about oh, Great. Right. Who's he? I have I something. Maybe she planted him. Just say. Go to weather. Hurry up. Come on. I don't know. He's not ready yet. You all yeah. expect Still, it to on. happen. Oh. Get rid of that jerk. You take Christmas for granted. You say, I don't have to do anything. You're wrong. Christmas isn't anything unless you do something about it. Not the other guy. You. I, I, uh, I've been a, a, a policeman in this city for 45 years. And I've seen people at their worst. But at Christmas time, they all seem to change. It's like magic. It hey, seems to... Ready. Hold it. Pull us all together. You could feel it on the what streets. Was the there was something in the air. Uh, we went into hard to hotel on, on the 50, uh, Mom, People were friendlier. Yeah. Dad? When Even the, the bad guys didn't door. seem quite Mom, so bad. He was Dad? Dad? Sure yeah, some yeah, years not better. Better. I don't want Robbie and Papa are. I remember when I came back from the South Pacific. First Christmas after the war was very special because I, I could see for the first time my my baby daughter. All holiday season is special. It's a time to get together, to celebrate life. And, and it's not just the, the, the giving of gifts. It's the giving of, of love, of friendship. That's why I, I brought my grandson all the way from California. Hey, I know that guy, but you've let me down. You've said it's a, well, it's a tough year. We've had tough years before. Look, I'm talking like an old fool, but the fact is that I, I, I do know what is wrong. I really do. You're all, you've all given up. There's still time. Just smile. Martini. And make it a double. Not too dry, and I will... Quiet. We want to hear this guy. And give some encouragement to somebody else. It's it's contagious. It is. That's what it'll, I told him. It'll spread real quickly to people in block after block, neighborhood after neighborhood, all over until finally the city will be filled with, with spirit. We're not gonna have time for the weather, just hold tight. And we still have the time! Hear me? Get up! It's Christmas! Go outside and go next door and wish your neighbor a Merry Christmas! Go outside and show everybody 
just how you feel. Sing. Sing your favorite carol. Come on, sing it! Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Sing! Something really wonderful is happening here. And I think now that I can wish you a very merry Christmas. This is Cindy Mills reporting live from Fifth Avenue. Oh, you did it, Michael. You found out what you were supposed to do. Senior, please. You're... Oh, this calls for a celebration. Father, I'm going to teach you the true meaning behind St. Thomas Aquinas. I don't understand. Oh, you shall, Father. You shall. some cheer. Papa! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm not crazy about the way you got us here, Papa. But I'm real glad you did. Oh! Go! Oh, hey, we're <laughs> home! Oh, all out, one at a time. Give me a right. hand. Out Thank you go, you. my dear. <laughs> Come on, Missy. Oh! Can Papa and I take a short ride ourselves? Just through the park? Oh, no, it's almost midnight. It's getting cold. I'll be good. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Are you still going to 
going to put Papa in a home. No. I couldn't do that. Christmas. And Papa, I learned the most important thing of all. What was that? Christmas is what you make of it. Life is what you make of it. That's all there really is to tell. Oh, except I saw Wiley Boggs again at Papa's funeral. We didn't talk, but I knew what he was thinking. The same thing I was thinking. Papa was the greatest man who ever lived. 